Hello and welcome to another episode of Highlights from the Hill, the original HCAM TV show that brings you inside the Hockington Public Schools system. Today we're talking about all things 8th grade trip. Welcome. Thanks Jim, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I have with me today Mr. Keller who is the principal of the middle school and Mrs. Uh, Becky Bate who is the person who runs the 8th grade trip to New York City. And I've asked them to be here because um, the eighth grade trip is slowly approaching. And also because I think that we used to think that what happened in New York City stayed in New York City. But this is the great unveiling. We are going to learn all about what happens in New York City with our eighth graders. So thank you for being here. Sure. sure. Um, and I guess I will start off by asking you, why New York City? Uh, so this, actually this year will be our fourth year going to New York City uh, and we, um, I guess it was five years ago or maybe six years ago, we started looking at the trip. We used to go to Washington DC and so we started looking at the trip and assessing if it was meeting our needs and for a variety of reasons we felt that DC was no longer meeting our needs. There were some curricular pieces, um, cost and also the amount of time that it was taking us to get to, to DC. It's about a, what, 10 hour bus ride there. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of our time uh, was spent on the bus which students, uh, most students yeah. certainly liked, um, but ultimately when we're paying that kind of money uh, and ultimately taking kids out of school, we felt like uh, we could um, meet our needs on, uh, in a closer trip. So spent a lot of time with committees of parents, students and teachers, and then we uh, settled on New York City. And we al ultimately feel as though New York City right now is meeting our needs in terms of a more broader uh, look at some of the things we do. Like we, we tie into related arts and that we go to a Broadway show. Um, and so, um, so there's a lot of pieces to it, and, and it's also less expensive uh, to families and obviously significantly closer. Sure. Yeah. So I think it does take a great investment to take close to 300 students to New York City for several days. And I don't just mean a, you know, a time investment, but I also think a cost investment. So um, tell a little bit about the curricular connections. Why sure. is that so important to our eighth graders? Sure. Um, well, I think... Um, the focus for this trip is really on connecting with related arts in a lot of ways um, and kind of extensions of what we do in the classroom. Not necessarily the curriculum we're doing day to day, but kind of building off of that. Um, so one of the, I think one of the highlights of the trip is going to Broadway and getting to see, this is going to be our second year getting to see To Kill a Mockingbird, which is not only a highlight of the trip, but that book is a highlight of the eighth grade curriculum. And so to be able to see that um, on Broadway and see how um, the director, you know, chooses to interpret it um, is really exciting for the kids and exciting for the chaperones as well. Um, so I think that's a big piece of it. Yeah. How um, do the kids feel when they come out of that show? Well, you it's know, really emotional. It is, it is <laughs> emotional. Um, and I think we're lucky that it's a book that they all really love reading mm. in the classroom. So it's not a book that... I don't know, they had to kind of slog through and then now sit through in the play. So they go into that theater already knowing the story and loving that story and like really connecting with the characters. I think out of all the books we read in eighth grade, that's the one where the kids, you know, feel that connection to Scout or like really admire Atticus. Um, and so they're kind of excited to see them in real life, even though obviously they're not real characters. Um, and I think, you know, coming out of the play last year, it's almost like what you would expect for any, anytime you see a book brought to stage or screen, right? There's going to be some people who are satisfied and some people who aren't. Um, but I think the kids who really liked it spoke with so much passion mm -hmm. about how much they loved it. And I know, you know, I really loved it as well. Um, and I've read that book. I, I can't even tell you how many times I've read it now. So I was a little nervous going in because if they were going to change things, you know, I didn't mm -hmm. want to, I don't know, dislike those choices. But I felt like it was a really satisfying um, portrayal of the novel. You used to um, watch the movie version, right? Yeah. Uh, do you still watch the movie version? or We do, but we do it a little differently. So instead of like reading the book and then watching the movie all at the end, um, we show pieces of the movie kind of along the way with reading it to kind of support the, the kids as they read the book. Um, and then so as to not, I don't know, over Mockingbird them, mm -hmm. um, we don't then again show it like in its entirety. So I don't even think they saw the whole movie last year. They just kind of saw key scenes from it. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So they were, I don't know, and I, there's probably a month or so at least 
in between Mockingbird, the book, and the play, so mm -hmm. they've had a little bit of a break. Yeah. Uh, in our first year, actually the first two years, we went to see Wicked, so mm -hmm. it was definitely oh, right. a different vibe yeah. uh, after, uh, but I, from my perspective, and I'm sure, I know from the eighth grade English teacher's perspective, having this uh, piece that we're going to see, um, to see this on Broadway is, is adds and connects to the yeah. curriculum. I think it's, it's really enriched our experience. Yeah, I think we were a little bit nervous about that because Wicked is like song and dance. It's, you know, these big scenes and it, were they going to be into a more quiet play? Um, but it's really hard to have that opportunity in front of you to go see Mockingbird on Broadway, especially with the, you know, stars that have been attached to it um, and not go. So, mm -hmm. you know, glad we went. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. I was feeling a little bit sore afterwards because the seats oh, are a little yeah. bit tight uh, yeah. and so there's not a lot of leg room, but nonetheless, I was distracted because it was a tremendous performance. Yeah, yeah. the seats are very small though. I think in the last year I've seen both Wicked yeah. and oh, yeah. Mockingbird. Yeah. yeah, and I preferred Mockingbird. That yeah. was wonderful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was good. Really well done. Uh, so tell a little bit about the social aspect of this. Like, what's it like in the bus? What's it like to have 300 kids in New York City? Yeah. I can't imagine it's got to be like herding cats. It's, it's got to be hard work. Um, I don't know. It's not as hard as as I anticipated. Hmm. Um, and I actually, you know, I lived in New York City for 10 years before I came back to New England. And so my comfort level is pretty high in New York. But hmm. even I was nervous about what's this going to look like to have all these kids right. in New York City. Um, I don't know. It it kind of just works. It, it Yeah. It, I, I don't know. We, we haven't had any issues. I don't see that we will. And hmm. um, I think the kids feel pretty comfortable there. Mm -hmm. um, but the social aspects, which, you know, yes, the kids are excited to go see Mockingbird, but, you know, if you ask the kids what their favorite part of the trip is, a lot of times they will mention the bus ride. For whatever reason, that is the bonding experience of the year for them. Um, and, you know, they watch movies on the way down. They hang out with each other. Once we're in the city and we're, you know, touring around, um, our tour guide will be on the microphone talking to kids and engaging kids and pointing things out to them. Um, but there is something about the bus ride for the kids that, you know, has made me wonder if we just need to put them on a bus and drive them around for a few <laughs> hours, right? Because they really love that. And it definitely feels like a rite of passage to be on this trip with their friends. Sure. I would say um, definitely that first year I was a little bit nervous about it. So mm. having switched from D DC, which has a lot more space and it was, a, I think it was much easier to, I don't know if easier is the right word, but it was, um, you could, you didn't have to be so diligent, right? As mm -hmm. you have to be in, I think in, in New York City. Um, and after that first year, we made a lot of changes. Like we, we moved the hotel much closer, uh, which actually raised the cost a little bit, but um, that first year we spent a lot of time on the bus and then uh, uh, Miss Abate worked with the tour company, we used Jump Street Tours to modify our itinerary so we weren't spending so much time on the bus and so we moved, we were able to like get dropped off in the morning and not have to get picked up until later in the day, uh, things like that. So mm -hmm. uh, we're spending a lot less time on the bus even though uh, it, um, you know, <laughs> here it is, it is a highlight. I think the other piece is we do a boat cruise, that's definitely another yeah, highlight uh, for students. Yeah. Uh, that's a dinner uh, after we go on the High Line. We yeah. uh, go down and have a dinner um, dance cruise. It's a, it's a taco bar, and you know everyone loves a taco. So it starts off with tacos, and then they can go out onto the deck. And the views on this boat cruise are amazing. The pictures that they get of the Statue of Liberty. Um, I remember the first year we th we were there, we had a beautiful <laughs> sunset. Yeah. Um, and it's just awesome to see them together as a class, like the mm. whole class together, dancing, you know, checking out the, the view and just having fun. It's really a nice moment for them. And that social piece too, like that's been really like, just being on that boat has actually been really interesting to watch because the kids kind of take turns on the dance floor. So there's different groups that kind of own the dance floor in different pieces and there are people out on the deck. Yep. And we've been lucky, knock on wood, the weather has been awesome mm. every time we've had yeah. the boat cruise. So yeah. it's been really beautiful. And so. then sometimes you see chaperones on the dance floor too, which mm. I think, you know, is always interesting. Mm. Do we have photographic evidence of that? I think we do I actually. We can yeah, we that. definitely do. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. So one thing I'm wondering, if nothing else, I just think this sounds like an amazing experience in their lives. As yeah. we talk about bonding, you just talk they're going to the big city. It's like it's like just one of those experiences that they'll remember for their lives. And I think a lot of them have been to New York before. Mm -hmm. Um 
with their families or, yeah. you know, but going with their friends, with their classmates, with their teachers yeah. is a totally different experience for them yeah. that makes it more memorable. All right. Yeah. Well, what I'm wondering is when you sit down and say, we're planning this, what are your goals yeah. overall for the whole trip? And like, how do you pick mm -hmm. the activities that you're going to be doing to support those? Yeah. I mean, we want, I mean, I think ultimately we want them to have fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's part of it, certainly. And we want to educate, like right. recognizing that we can educate outside of the classroom walls yeah. and connect to some of those pieces like To Kill yeah. a Mockingbird. And or going to some of the art museums that we go to. Um, you know, uh, one of the one of the things we do is um, actually go to the High Line. Um, which is an interesting part of the city because the High Line has been recently built mm -hmm. and because of that it kind of gentrified a whole section of New York City um, and kids before we go there get to watch a documentary that talks about the High Line mm -hmm. and the impact that it's had on the city and on the people and kind of the the um, I don't know the class conflicts that have taken place because of that and that's something that we don't really have room for in the curriculum as a whole, you know, mm -hmm. but because of the trip, it kind of gives us that opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. And so then we go to New York and they can see the High Line and kind of see the neighborhood that we learned about. I think that also makes it really meaningful for them. Yeah. Um, and I think our goal is, yeah, we want to, we want them to learn, but I think this is like the perfect opportunity for extension activities. Yeah, and, I, th and um, I think the other thing that was happening with Washington, D.C., um, because we did not have government in our curriculum, which has changed in the, in the past couple of years, but when we would go to D.C., uh, we would go to memorials and, and uh, museums without a lot of context and a sure. lot of understanding of why we were there. So with New York, Mrs. Bate has done yeah. a lot of work with Jump Street tours and connected with them on a regular basis, gone to New York and done some research to build programs so the kids aren't just walking through a museum. Yeah. Um, yeah. but actually with a purpose and yeah so we want it to be engaging for them um, so like for example when we go to the Museum of Modern Art they do kind of a scavenger hunt mm -hmm. but there are creative things it's not like find this painting it's like find something that you would want to hang in your home mm -hmm. or find something that reminds you of New York City right <laughs> and so they're going to that they're taking a picture of it they're kind of making note of, you know, why they picked it mm -hmm. um, so that it's meaningful because we definitely um, don't want them just wandering through the museums. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of adults don't know how to go through museums either and, and need a, a focus and a direction. So, you know, we work, I need really hard. Yeah, we work hard to give them <laughs> that. Um, and I think we try to balance that kind of stuff and then also the downtime. So mm -hmm. the boat cruise, um, last year we went to Central Park um, to give them Lovely. some some time to just kind of hang out and Phone enjoy free, the city. Yeah. Phone free time. And it was, oh, that's really that nice. was really yeah. a highlight for me to see the kids mm -hmm. just sitting in groups or, you know, like playing ball um, and no phones, just being present there together mm -hmm. with this beautiful backdrop of New York City. Yeah. yeah. And you know, you mentioned that to me. Do you remember what you tell me about the kids and their their reaction to having a no phone time? Yes, but can you remind me? <laughs> <laughs> how, you, how they were amazed at how they enjoyed it. Oh, yeah. yeah and then absolutely. you would ask them, well, do you think that you'll continue on or, or try doing that? And they were all like, no. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that's just it. And, and I, you know, I personally do the same thing, too. I enjoy yeah. when I put my phone down, but mm. it's, it's hard not to. Yeah. The one thing we haven't mentioned, too, is the 9-11 Memorial Museum. Yeah. Mm. Um, that is a really powerful um, stop on our, on our trip as well. And... Um, it's not really a part of our curriculum, but I think because we're going to it in New York, we kind of make it a part of our curriculum, which I think um, is kind of a cool part of the trip, like in terms of extensions, mm -hmm. like we're doing things in the classroom to make that trip in New York more meaningful. Mm -hmm. So we do spend time talking about September 11th um, to kind of prepare them for that, but they certainly are moved by that museum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you have one of those memories of a trip that is just that sort of standout memory? You'll never forget this. This is that one thing or that one kid or that one takeaway. Hmm. I don't know, Alan. What about you? Um, I mean, so, I mean, I guess over the years, the, the, this is the past three years, I, th I really think like um, 
I, you know, and Mrs. Bate mentioned it earlier, but I think the, the boat cruise has really been a, mm. a highlight just to see the entire class together and enjoying yeah. that. Um, you know, we used to, when we were in DC, we used to do a dance in a hotel conference room, which always just felt yeah. a little odd. Um, this is just a really nice environment and just to be in, with this beautiful backdrop and everybody just having a really good time, I think has, has certainly been a highlight. Yeah, and it's on the second night of the trip, so it's kind of like their last big thing that they're doing together and it's a really perfect ending for it. Yeah, and they have three days, two nights. Yeah, it's three yeah. days, two nights, yeah. I, I guess the other thing, um, is interesting is it, it's a lot of work and I and I, mm -hmm. I you started asking a question Jim um, that made me think about like so we're already starting as you know Dr. Kavanaugh we're already starting planning for next year's trip because we went to school committee and presented um, uh, that initial permission for next year's field trip mm -hmm. and so we put a lot of time into it um, Mrs. Bate does Mrs. Burke as our nurse mm -hmm. so there's a, a lot of work with food um, in terms of where we're going and thinking about allergies and, mm -hmm. and all kinds of things. And so, we, and then we bring snacks on the, on the bus. So there are points in the year where we say, oh my gosh, we do this in sixth grade because we have nature's classroom. Yeah. We do it in eighth grade. We're the only school uh, that does overnight field trips for an entire grade level. Yes maybe we shouldn't be doing this and and so and and always right before that feeling becomes really strong i think mm -hmm. but then yeah, you like, shared that with me before <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i think in yeah in the weeks like leading up to the trip yeah it starts to weigh on you a right. little yeah um and so but i feel like on the on the on the bus ride back yeah. and in moments during it it's like this is why we do it and just seeing mm -hmm. the yeah. kids thoroughly enjoy yeah. That opportunity, that experience, and having learned all these things and, and created these memories uh, is, mm. I guess, is what stands in, out with me. See, I'm so weak now, I'm a little misty thinking about that. <laughs> yeah. But it is interesting that you have these trips that are almost like bookends, right? So the kids come into sixth grade, yeah. they do nature's classroom, they have that sort of really nice team building experience. But then as they leave middle school, they also have this rite of passage. Right. You know, it, this trip is important, I think. It is. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, you always, I think, comment on that at the end of the trip of just like how great it was. And it, it is so nice to see the kids really enjoying themselves. And so it makes the work that we put into it, I think, worth it. And it makes it really difficult to think about not having the trip. And just like Nature's Classroom, too, like, granted, it's at the end of their middle school career, but the kids have an <coughs> opportunity to see their teachers in that different oh, setting yeah. and connect and doing all these different things. I think it's, it's, that's you know, nice. it's really interesting because. If I were to come up with something, I would not have mentioned the bus ride down and the bus ride back oh God, as being huge. a highlight. Huge. But you know what? That is just so Hopkinton. Why? You know, because this school, this school system is just so aware and kind. And yeah. like the kids are just, they get it. You know, and I mean, you always have, you know, I mean, kids are really growing during the middle school years and changing and stuff. But overall, the tone is one of unbelievable kindness. Mm. Yeah. Where I remember when I was in school, if the biggest thing I would think of is apathy, you know, it's like, yeah, I'm in this school and so is everybody else. But these kids, there is a cohesion there. Mm. And it's just amazing that the bus ride is really, it kind of shows. And I think we, you know, when we put together the groups, you know, it's like if you've ever planned a wedding and had to, you know, had to do the, the table. The seating arrangement. Seating arrangement. Did you do that, Jim? Did you plan the seating arrangements for your wedding? Um, well, I, no, I did not. I was, I was only <laughs> I was the groom. So I, there was a bride, there was a bride's mother, there was my okay. mother, and but, they were all set with that. <laughs> but I think people know the pain that people go through it's in terrible. doing that. And, you know, this is like 300 kids that we're trying to, mm -hmm. uh, when we put together the bus groups and, and all of that, we really want to make sure that kids are with their friends mm. and that they're going to have a good experience, um, you know, and that there's good energy and all of that because again, we want them to have fun. We want this to be a, like a good experience for them. Mm. And the bus ride is magical for mm. them. You know, I remember even like talking to kids who graduated years ago, yeah. like what was your favorite part? The bus ride. Do you have, is the, is the itinerary and the agenda set mm -hmm. or do you revisit it every year? Oh, we, yeah. we revisit it every year. So mm -hmm. I, I think every year we've changed it uh, based on our experience. So that after I mentioned earlier that first uh, year, we moved some things around so that we could be spending a lot less time on the bus. Yeah. Uh, and our, like we changed to uh, MoMA after I think that first year. The Met. We went to the Met the first yeah, year yeah, yeah. and it just didn't feel as engaging. It didn't feel mm -hmm. very engaging for the kids. Mm -hmm. The next year it was much more engaging. Mm -hmm. um, 
and we changed, so we, 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 we modify and tweak it uh, constantly. But we are all set for this year, so yeah. we solidified the agenda and yeah. yeah. Is it a lot of work to prepare? So like, you know, like, so the kids don't surprise you with like, oh, you know, what's this display about? Or do you like, oh, you kind of like, whatever, wherever you're going, you know, do you like brief yourself on where you'll be going so you know? Well, I mean, we brief all the chaperones. Okay. Like, they all get a copy of the itinerary. We, you know, they know what we're doing. And mm -hmm. at every, I think at almost every place, we have, like, an activity for them to do. Um, so, you know, actually, I think before our first year of going to MoMA, I actually, on a separate trip to New York, went to MoMA to try to, like, scout there you go. out. Mm -hmm. and Research to, right there. And try yeah. to plan. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, and, you know, try to say, like, how are we going to make this connect? To our eighth graders, mm -hmm. yeah. And our, and um, Becky mentioned this earlier, but our, our tour. So we have so we work with Jump Street Tours, and so there's a tour guide that comes on each bus, mm -hmm. uh, and so that person does a lot of prepping the kids and and working with us. They're as well. really okay. amazing. We've been really lucky with our tour guides. I think they're super knowledgeable and fun. You know, um, they because you, you know that can make or break your experience yeah. i think yeah. if you don't have a good tour guide yeah yeah and then we also have another person from jump street who comes to kind of just help with everything in general um which keeps it running really smoothly for us yeah and they're doing that behind the scenes stuff like yeah. getting to the restaurant before we get there and making, making sure that everything's sure, yeah. set up yeah. yeah all right tell about the hotel <laughs> yeah i mean what is that like you know you've got 300 kids running around a hotel. I mean, is it lights out? Is it, I mean, curfew? You're so and tired are they when good? we get back to the hotel. Like, we don't get back oh, to the hotel until wear very them out. Like, We totally wear them out. Um, so when they get back and it's like, we do room checks. Mm -hmm. We, you know, seal, you know, we tape the room. <laughs> do you tape, tape the room? Well, yeah, we do. I and then we, about that. We, you know, we have uh, security That's a security guards that come on. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's not to like, not so they can't get out of the room. It's just so right. that you we can tell. Say, yeah. You know. We can tell, yeah. right? Yeah. We've never we've never had any issues with that knock on wood. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Yeah. Um, but we wear them out. That's our strategy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, think. so the two night events we so we go to Broadway the first night we're there it's late. and that's not till like we don't get back till like ten. And they've been up since like four in the morning. Sure. Yeah. 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 And then the next night is a boat cruise, so it's it's definitely later nights and so that has that's that's been intentional uh, yeah. <laughs> over the years. It's, and everybody's tired. Yeah. yeah, and then we have breakfast in the morning. We wake up at the hotel. Yep. Um, so that works kind of nice, and we do that in different shifts. So. Yeah. Have you ever lost a kid? What? Oh, just no. one. Boy. There's no. 300 of them. Yeah, see, that's what I meant. <laughs> no, it's but really you know, scary. so last year, which was a lovely addition, because the feedback that we got uh, from you're gonna bring this up. Yeah, I am. Uh, from the feedback that we got from. Uh, students was that it was just so frantic and so fast paced. So we actually built in, as we mentioned earlier, this kind of downtime at times, uh, not, not downtime at Times Square, I don't think that's possible, but <laughs> at uh, Central, Central Park. Park. Uh -huh. um, and so unfortunately, we did have a student who got injured last year uh, while we were there. So he actually had to stay back in New York because uh, he wound up going to the hospital. And we had a teacher stay with him. While his parents, but he uh, was happened. not lost. So. No, he was not lost. Just was. left behind. <laughs> you know, you take the. I, I like painted this beautiful picture of our time in New York. I mean, in Central Park. It still was beautiful. It was, it was just like it was so just beautiful. It's something to Central learn from. Park so is yeah. one of my favorite parts of the city, and so I like wanted to give the kids a chance to experience yeah. that. And it was one of those moments where you're like, oh my god, look at this! They're having so much fun, and it's beautiful. We're outdoors, and then. You know, yeah, unfortunately yeah. someone got hurt. It wasn't too serious, but mm. um, kind of a bummer. Thanks for bringing that up, Alan. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that. I was just answering the question. <laughs> Making it real. Yep. Making it real. And bringing up the small seats at Mockingbird. <laughs> <laughs> and are they still, like, all zippy on the ride home, or do they, they get kind are. of flat on the ride home? <laughs> yeah, I guess it I depends. It's a little yeah. bit of a different environment. Maybe, yeah. maybe, yeah, the students, I guess, are still kind of excited. You and know what? The chaperones. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know what I think we haven't talked about, which we should in our last couple of minutes, is probably the food. Because I know, oh, yeah. you know, Mr. Keller, you really enjoy, I don't know, the food options. Sure, like, that's a highlight right. of any trip, I yep. would think. Yeah. Or I mean, we talked about the taco bar a little bit. You did, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, this year we actually have Planet Hollywood mm -hmm. or Hard Rock, Hard Rock Cafe mm -hmm. on the first night. Um, and... Um, you really enjoy the sliders, I think, last year. I did. I did yeah. <laughs> do enjoy yeah. a slider, yes. And then yeah. we work with Earl of Sandwich for, oh, yeah. um, for two different We did box meals. lunches, right? Yeah. So when the kids first get to New York and we yeah. go to the Statue of Liberty, we had box lunches for them to kind of yes. keep them out of the lines. And Yeah. It yeah. must be crazy. It must be difficult with all the food allergies that are prevalent yeah. today. It's a lot of work. So that's where... Mrs. Uh, Burke yeah, does, does a, a lot. Yeah, a ton of yeah. work. Yeah. 
on working with working with the hotel, working with the mm -hmm. different vendors, communicating with parents. Yeah, um, yeah it is it is mm -hmm. a, a lot of work. And we are absolutely you know committed to everyone's safety, um, but I think it's also a great opportunity for some of these kids to um, you know be independent and mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. navigate some of that. You know, sure. I mean, eighth grade is a transitional time of trying to foster independence. And so I think this also gives them an opportunity for that too. Mm. Yeah. Now on this trip, have you ever had one of those kids that you think as a result of this trip, that kid has sort of been altered in some way, shape or form, like their worldview or? Um, I think there's some kids who say, wow, I love New York. I want to mm. live here. And then there's some kids who say, not for me. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the work we do, and I mentioned it before with the, um, with the gentrification of the city. I think that's really powerful for them. Um, and they look at the city in a different way than they didn't. Than, mm -hmm. You know, it's not just Times Square and maybe seeing a celebrity here or there, you know, realizing that there's real people that live in New York and work in New York and mm -hmm. have real lives mm -hmm. um, that are not always easy. Yeah, yeah it's not all glamorous. I, I would I'm, say the other thing, sorry. No, go uh, ahead. The other thing that I think is really powerful on a trip like this, and I see it in Nature's Classroom, I see it on this, is that a student <laughs> who doesn't necessarily shine academically in the classroom, mm -hmm. um, just seeing leadership skills like out mm -hmm. and like gathering his group together or her group together and those kind of pieces. So like that, that that's I think a highlight for me too, mm -hmm. like to go back to your earlier question mm -hmm. too, is seeing students in that different setting and, and how they sure. um, are actually a leader, maybe not in the academic classroom, but in other settings. Yeah, mm. and make connections with their teachers in right. different ways too, mm. yeah. Yeah, that's really fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's exciting. I'm really, really excited for both Did of you. Did you want to come? And for the kids. You can chaperone. All right, and that's all the time that we have <laughs> in this episode of Highlights from the Hill. Thank you both for being here. Thank you thank both. You. We're only about 100 days away if you have to plan <laughs> for your trip. And we thank you for watching this show, and we invite you to tune in to the next one where we talk more about the Hopkinton Public School System. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you.